Welcome to Looking Through the Spectacles of Scripture with Dr. Daniel C. Cross, pastor, author, and composer. It is true that people suffer needlessly because they don't know God by His Word. Listen as Daniel takes a look at this life through the spectacles of Scripture. Our scripture this evening is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Paul says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We're in a four-part series concerning beware of the love of fantasy. And last week we left off dealing with 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and we started with verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not fighting with bullets and guns and fists, but with the word of God. It's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And sin is a stronghold. And there's a strange corruption once you start diving into sin. Then Paul goes on to say, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought, whatever it is, taming your passions, bringing into captivity every thought, whatever it is. If if you're an alcoholic and you've been calling yourself a social drinker saying that I can take it, I leave it, but you always take it. Bringing into captivity every thought and leaning on God. If you say, I'm a prevaricator. No, you're a liar and you need to turn that over to God and ask God to help you and ask God for forgiveness. Bring it into captivity Activity and, 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 and put a stronghold on that thing. Bring it into captivity. If you say, well, I'm a kleptomaniac. No, you're a thief. That's a cute little name you're hiding behind. But you're a thief. Bring it into captivity. Every thought. To the obedience of Christ. I'm an adulterer. I'm a lust. I'm a lust. I'm a fornicator. Bring it into captivity. Every thought. To the obedience of Christ. Huh. Casting down imaginations and every high thing, every proud look, every proud word. You think you're something because you you got all these degrees, but all those degrees stop at the grave. Whether you're in the yeah, you, you, you're a mason, you got all these degrees as a mason, you got your master's degree, or you got your doctorate, does that matter? All those names and titles stop at the grave. So while you're living, better start casting down these fantasies, these imaginations, and every proud thought. Try and exalt yourself higher than what God meant for you to. And live by the truth of God by knowledge of his word in obedience to Christ that that's that's where we left off t- uh, uh, last week and we said that dealing with this fantasy thing which our think tanks and the experts out here who are part of the problem are trying to veer us away from the word of God to get us to think like they think. Like who think? All those without Christ. So there is in fantasy a new world created by the minds of men. That's what we left off dealing with last week. We said that that fantasy it's it's, it's in the church. It's in the schools. It's in the newspaper. It's in books. Hustlers, mag, playbook. It's, it's in books. 
It's on the radio. You can call in for sex talk shows and phone bites, etc. You can talk to Cleo if you want, Dr. Ruth, Steve Harvey, if you, if you need to solve some of your problems. Talk to everybody except God. Fantasy. Pledges. War against responsibility and accountability. Fantasy pledges war against work and against stewardship. Against in improving ourselves and maintaining stability. The love of fantasy is the love of death. Because it rejects life and it rejects the world as God has ordered it. God's weapons, his word, hmm. God's weapons, his word can destroy fantasy. That's why we got to lean on it. That, 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 that's that's why you got to come where his word is is, is being taught. We, we we said last week you can go from kindergarten all the way to PhD and never bump into God anywhere along the line. You we're not teaching God in your grades, most of your grade schools and high schools and colleges. You got to come where the word of God is being taught. If there is a church anywhere around you that that has its doors open in the name of Jesus Christ, that's where you need to be. A Bible believing church that has its doors open in the name of jesus christ where the word of god is being explained where it's being taught where it's being expounded upon because god's weapons his word can destroy fantasy it can tear down the weapons of the mind it can destroy the imaginations that are so wicked our weapons are not human weapons nor do we use human weapons resources every thought of the mind I can't say it enough every thought of the mind must be brought into captivity to Christ because the goal of those who are delving in fantasy the goal of fantasy is to make man's imagination like law L-A-W. That's the goal of fantasy. All those, whether you're those in politicians, those in, in, in the ministry who err concerning the word, uh, those in government, the goal of those who are in fantasy world is to make man's imagination the law. Not the word of God, the law, but man's imagination, the law. And either Christians will take a stand on the word of God uh, they'll be subject to fantasy law. And what this requires is casting down the imagination. Paul says of men's world, you've got to cast down men's world and man's world of fantasy. We must put obedience into force in order to enforce God's word against all disobedience. Why? Because there's a desire to corrupt. There are those in power. There are those fighting for, uh, uh, those fighting for uh, adulterous rights. I mentioned that last week. Those fighting for fornicators' rights. Those fighting for prevaricators' rights. Those who lie. Use that little cute name to have behind. Those fighting for social drinkers' rights. Uh, alcoholics. Cute name they had behind. And those fighting for gay and lesbian rights, their agenda. And they are those who carry the dream of having total corruption. There is the idea, and ideas have consequences. There is the idea that if you can have total corruption, you can have total innocence. Now, take a swallow now what that means is that if you corrupt everything totally 
then man will be innocent of the idea of evil because evil will be the only thing that he knows. You know, we got all these little, uh, all these little sayings and superstitions. My hand is itching. Well, we've been taught that if your hand is itching, superstition, that means you're going to get some money. That ain't in the Bible nowhere. And plus, have you realized you ain't got no money every time your hand was itching? Uh-uh. Every time a black cat ran across you, that didn't mean that you were doomed for the day. You're still living. You're still breathing. When you forgot to read your horoscope, uh, life still went on. You need to read the word of God. He knows what's, what your tomorrow will be like. Folk forget about that we have a God who rules the world and his will is irresistible and irreversible. That's who we need to lean on. It's God who made things ex nilio out of nothing. It's God who made you and who made me and knows the number of hairs on our head. Wouldn't it seem like we ought to lean on the one that made us? We got enough sense that we have a Ford car to take it to a Ford dealer if you got engine trouble under the hood. We have enough sense if you got a Mercedes, take it to a Mercedes dealer if you got problems with the engine, something on the inside. How come we don't have enough sense that when we have problems on the inside to take it to God in prayer and leave it there? Hmm. For men to pull off this fantasy thing, for for men to to pull off this total corruption, they have an agenda. And the agenda is, first of all, children must be exploited. That's why we got to protect the lambs. We got to protect the minds of the children. And, and, and you all are out there and you all are out there who are homeschooling. Don't you let anybody tell you something's wrong with you. Your child's going to be strange. If you have the mind to, if you if you have the knowledge to, if you have the stamina to, the nerves to hang in there with your children, homeschool them, homeschool them. That be the will of the Lord. We got to protect the lambs and we protect the minds of the children. Because those who are eating off another tree. Those who are participating in this pulling off of total corruption. They know that if they can get to the minds of our lambs, of our children, through our schools. Through Hollywood, through the media, through TV, through cartoons and in our newspaper. If they can get to children, their hopes is that they will have each generation after that breed corruption and teach to their children and then teach to their children, thereby enhancing Satan's idea of total corruption. In Miami, Florida, uh, there was a, a gay organization there who had an article in the Dade County newspaper boasting about their corruption of children. You know, they, they had they had they had no uh, <laughs> they had they had no uh, shame in saying that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to children, to, you know, to, to get to their minds. To let them know there's nothing wrong with anything that they do. Total corruption. Satan wants your corruption. Since Satan and his imps, and those who are his followers, since they want since they want every area in one's life to be corrupt, the attack and the infiltration they say must be in our churches as well so it's no surprise we got all kind of mess in our churches five year olds pastor in churches ten year olds pastor in churches they can't hardly go to the restroom by themselves we got every kind of 
bishop you want to name gay bishops those who are don't know if they want to be a man or a woman when they're walking down the street can't tell if it's him or her the idea to corrupt is very basic that's why child pornography is a real thing and I doubt if legislation is going to do much about it because it's a major appetite on the part of modern men. And we won't be able to change that appetite unless we have a Christian faith that dominates the scene. And Father, that's my prayer today. That there be men and women out here that would stand, take a stand for what's right, for the word of God, to stand on God's word. Father, my prayers that some man, some woman, some boy, some, some girl, some, somebody that's eaten off the wrong tree, Heavenly Father, that, that they would come to Christ and that they would know you. Not that our children would be doctors and lawyers and, and teachers, but that they would know you. That's my prayer, Lord. And that they would accept your free offer of forgiveness and your free offer of eternal life. Now, Father, give us some sweet sleep on tonight. And give us new mercy and new strength when we wake up in the morning to take care of tomorrow's burdens. Now, this was what we this is what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to Looking Through the Spectacles of Scripture with Dr. Daniel C. Cross, pastor, author, and composer. It is true that people suffer needlessly because they don't know God by His Word. Thank you for listening to Through the Spectacles of Scripture with Dr. Daniel C. Cross, Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Suffer without a cause and they Pain and sorrow All because They lack God's word